So like in course content, first we will do requirement gathering. OK, and then we will do project lifecycle discussion. Like uh, what all page are involved in project development lifecycle that we will discuss here. Like we have multiple project development lifecycle like waterfall model, like we have multiple models like waterfall model, then agile methodology. So we will be more focused on agile, agile methodology. So we will understand this particular agile methodology and to manage this agile methodology, we will use a Jira ticketing tool. OK, so I will give you a like high level introduction of like this, how sprints work, what Jira ticketing tool do, what all capability we have, how we can create ticket and how we can like maintain the ticket in Jira ticketing tool, that kind of things we will see. OK. And then we will see Confluence also. This Confluence is uh, like you can say it's a document repository where you can maintain all your documents and all. Okay, like functional design document, technical design document. If you have set of credential and all, okay, which should be known by every team member, those kind of details you can share with the help of Confluence. Okay. Then as a sent like a uh, repository, we we are going to use Git repository. So I will help you to create account for everyone. OK, and for this particular project, we will create multiple repository, one repository for document, and we will have multiple repository for projects. And I will give access to everyone, so you will able to clone that center repository in your local system as a local repository. So whatever development I will do, you will able to pull that code from center repository in your system. And like we will do lots of other practice here also. We will see how to create repository, how to clone it, how to push in Git repository. Many of you from IT background, so you should have some idea, but uh, if someone is new, so for you also, like we will do things from scratch, even from like we will start creating account from there, we will see. For CICT purpose, we are going to use Jenkins. OK, so whenever we will complete our code, First, we will do uh, gen like we will commit our code on Git repository. Then we will write CI/CD pipeline script, and with the help of that script, we will deploy our code on Cloud Hub. Okay. Coming to this RAML part, like we will we will create RAML from scratch, and here we will follow all the best practice of RAML. Okay, it's not like uh, we will just uh, create RAML. Uh, like workable RAML, we will follow all the best practice. Like we will create fragment, we will create traits, we will create data type, we will create library. Okay, whatever reusable component we can make, we will do everything. Okay, and one RAML I will do from very scratch. Other RAML we will do copy paste. Okay, so that kind of skill also you need. Not only for RAML, for project also. For everything, first thing we will do from scratch. We will do everything. From very scratch, but after that, I will show you how you can copy paste thing and how you can make your development process fast. Okay, next uh, we will develop our API and we will follow all the best practice. Okay, in API also, like you can simply develop your API. Okay, and at the same time, if you will follow best practice, then uh, like for other people, it will be very helpful for your team member and for for you also, like if someone team member is working, so you will easily able to understand their code and everything. OK, then. Like uh, we will on testing part also, we will do different kind of testing. We will do. Integration unit testing. We will do M unit testing. We will do integration testing and for performance testing. Also, I will see like if uh, is, uh, if we will have time, then we will using JMeter. We will do performance testing and load testing. And if we will run out of time, then I will share at least video where you can go with uh, this. Uh, performance and uh, load testing using JMeter, but most probably we will cover. OK, CSD we already seen. OK. Uh, deployment wise, we are going to use cloud of deployment model, but I will give you understanding of how this on page deployment model, hybrid deployment model and RTF deployment model works. 
okay i will give you a high level overview but on uh, cloud of deployment model we are going to get in depth knowledge okay we will see everything we will deploy we will apply security policy everything we will do environment fetch like when you will join any company you will have lots of environment Okay, company to company again it will vary. Few company has only two environment, few company has four or five environment. So it depends on like what uh, process they are following, how big clients are, how big client they are. Okay, so generally if you go to any project, like uh, you will have Dave, we are developer will deploy their code and they will do testing. SIT here you will do integration testing. Like testing team generally used to take care of this environment and they do integration testing here. Then user acceptance testing. Once uh, like uh, testing team will complete integration testing, then user will do testing here on UAT environment. Once everything will be done, then pre-prod will be similar to production environment. Okay, where we do this uh, load testing, performance testing, pain testing, those kind of testing happens on this environment and generally testing team and uh, yeah, generally testing team will be or and QE teams. Uh, someone I think uh, here also we have from QE team. So generally QE team like take care of this environment and they do a different kind of testing here. And then uh, production like uh, where our uh, once we want to make our project go live, then we will deploy code on production. OK. Then. Uh, here, as I mentioned, like we will see everything on cloud up. We will get in-depth knowledge and I will show you environment promotion also, like how we are moving from deep to production environment. So in Microsoft, we have one capability environment promotion. OK, that we will see here. OK, and as I mentioned, we will see a uh, security policy. So security policy wise, we will uh, see many, many security policy that I will show you just now what all we are going to cover. And then at the end, I will give you some uh, like uh, introduction about. Uh, means I will give you detail how we are going to introduce this particular project. OK, what all cross question they can ask. At least two, three question I will tell you like how you will explain this project in interview. What, what all challenge you have faced in this particular project? OK, and how you will include this particular project in your introduction part also those kind of uh, knowledge I will share with you. And a part of that, I will give you some uh, other video also where you can get more interview question, technical questions. OK, and some scenario based question also that we will I will I will share. OK. OK, so this is like uh, about the course content, what we are going to do. Other like uh, detail we have objective of this training program. So here we are going to simulate real world scenario. OK, as I mentioned, like this will not be 100% real time, but it will be tends to like uh, 80 to 90% real time. OK. Everything most of like not everything, most of the thing will do in real time uh, way only, but uh, we have some constant. OK, uh, let's say like uh, here we will not able to configure load balancer. Here we will not able to configure some. Uh, what I can say few few other thing which is license one. But apart of that, everything like we will have Salesforce account. We will have database account. We will have cloud of deployment model. We will apply security policy. We will follow Jenkins pipeline to do deployment. OK. As I mentioned, 80 to 90 percent things will be very similar to how we are doing in company. OK. And the same standard I have followed for big MNC, even for big four MNC I have followed. So same knowledge I am going to see here. OK. Then uh, we are going to use Mule, MuleSoft out of box capability. So in MuleSoft, like we have lots of out of box capability, we are going to use that. And based on our experience, I will I will show you like uh, which component will be more suitable at which place. OK, to perform same activity, we have two, three component. But I will tell you like which component will be more suitable there. OK, to make your API more efficient. OK, for example, like uh, you want to do two, three external call. You can do sequential call also one by one. You can do sequential call also. But that will improve. Sorry, that will like uh, take more time 
and it will decrease performance of your API. Okay, so we have to make we should not only develop our API, we should make our API in such a way it should be more efficient. Its uh, throughput should be better, like uh, response time should be less. Okay, so we will see how we can do parallel processing, then how we can use batch processing for multi threading execution. So that kind of things we will see here. Okay, then. Uh, for RAML part, we are going to use RAML 1.0 and we will use Design Center to create our RAML and then we will publish on Exchange. Okay, and at the same time, we are going to follow API development lifecycle that I will explain very soon how this API development lifecycle works. And we will follow all these steps of API development lifecycle starting from RAML, feedback, then development, testing, Applying security policy, deployment, troubleshooting, everything we will see. OK, then uh, like once we will complete development and all, then we will do different kind of testing. As we discussed, we will do unit testing, immunity testing. So immune testing is nothing but it's a similar to J meter. Sorry, uh, it's a similar to J unit. OK, how we do or automate our testing process in Java? Same way in MuleSoft also we have capability. We can write a unit script to automate our testing process in MuleSoft. OK, and here we are going to use a unit recorder also and a unit manual also. OK, now. For testing purpose like uh, we will use. Postman mostly we will use Postman. But if you want to use, you can use SOAP UI also. You can use JMeter also. Okay, JMeter generally we use for load and performance testing, but SOAP UI you can use for testing REST API. Okay, and then like uh, I will demonstrate this project once we will complete the development. I will demonstrate this project, and I will extend and enhance this in real time, like in same way how we do real time project. Okay. So far, I think uh, we haven't covered much, but if anyone has any doubt, you can ask. No, if, if anyone will have any doubt in between, you can raise your hand in, in chat. We have one option to raise your hand. You can raise your hand, I raise your hand and when you are OK, it, uh, it's look like uh, you have raised your hands. If you have anything, yeah, you can ask. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, my question, uh, what kind of uh, tools are we going to integrate our uh, API, which we are going to build here? And okay. uh, like the financial domain or the healthcare domain where we are working on this? OK, so for this particular requirement, whatever requirement I am going to uh, say, means whatever uh, requirement we are going to implement or whatever functionality we are going to implement here, that functionality is suitable for banking also and healthcare also. Okay, generally I used to take uh, such kind of uh, functionality which should be suitable for multiple okay. open, so you can use as per your requirement. Okay. So this will be more suitable for banking one and for this uh, healthcare one. Okay. But it's suitable for other other domain also. What uh, that I will say later on. OK. OK, and how many endpoints we will have? Sorry, how many? In the points. OK, so endpoint you mean to say like API or how many external system we will have? Uh, I mean like uh, how many external system we'll have? OK, so here we will have some uh, as here we will have Salesforce. Then database. SMTP to send email, some third party API to send SMS. OK, then we will have object store. OK, we will have auth service provider. OK, so like that, I think seven to eight uh, endpoints or you can say target system we have. Which we are going to integ uh, integrate here. Thank you very much. Any other query? from anyone else? Others, please go on mute. If you're not speaking anything, please be on mute. Uh, hi, Ravi. 
Yes. Is there any chance to communicating with SAP? Uh, most of the time they are using SAP as a target or source. Okay. So first thing like uh, SAP is not very common if you are integrating with Microsoft. If you will mm -hmm. say Salesforce, then it will be very common. Okay. Okay. Wherever you are working with MuleSoft integration technology, most of the places you will have Salesforce. Yeah. SAP is not very common, but uh, like uh, what I have worked with SAP, I have worked with SAP Concur. Okay. And there also we used REST API. We haven't used their connector. Okay. So I'm not sure like SAP give us a trial account or not. Okay. If they provide us trial account, then uh, uh, not in this particular project since whatever functionality we are going to cover here uh, that functionality don't need SAP integration but uh, if someone want to see how it works and SAP provide their trial account then I can I can give some demo okay. that, yeah, yeah Bele, I think you have raised your hand Bele and Vishnu hi Ravi just uh, I want to raise something uh, I know you, you we will use in our real project on the uh, github as a repository do you have any chance to see B bitbucket because most of the current projects are using that one so okay. you have a chance to see on bitbucket thank you okay actually bitbucket uh, uh, we will not use here we will use git and it's not like uh, bitbucket is widely used and git is not so i have seen like uh, so far i have seen many projects and most of the pro, uh, places I have seen Azure repository and Git only. Very rarely I have seen Bit, Bit, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Bitbucket and uh, Bitbucket repository. Okay, but uh, all repository works in very similar way. Okay, it's uh, just uh, different vendors or different company. Otherwise, the way of working is very similar. Even same command work will work for all the repository. Thank you. Okay, there, yeah, there will not be any difference. So here uh, we'll do on Git only since uh, Git provide lots of uh, free, uh, lots of capability on their free account also. So better we'll use Git. Uh, sorry, Git uh, Git repository. Thank you, Rod. Uh, yeah, yes. My doubt is around endpoint. Uh, the number of APIs we build or the target systems we have reached. I have that doubt. Endpoint. Endpoint means like uh, here uh, you should not say endpoint. You should say external system. How many systems we are going to integrate here? Okay. So as I mentioned here, we are going to integrate Salesforce database, SMTP, then object store, then OAuth, Part, some third party system, third party API. So those kind of external system we are going to integrate with the help of Minsoft. And we will follow API led architecture also. So we will split our uh, API into three layer based on the API led architecture that I will explain soon. I think uh, we are good with all the doubts. Let's move forward. Oh, Ravi, Ravi. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Ravi, uh, when you say external system, um, as you said, it includes also JMS. But JMS actually here, JMS, I don't think we need JMS for this particular requirement. OK. Yeah, again for JMS also, if you want, then I can give, I can create some other demo for GMS, but uh, for this particular project, we don't need GMS integration. Mm, See, there, but, are 200, uh, there are 200 mm -hmm. plus uh, like end systems are there. OK, and 200 plus connectors are there. Definitely we will not able to cover all, but uh, here we are going to cover uh, eight to nine connector. OK, which will be good enough to start your career in MuleSoft. But definitely in future uh, you will get more connectors and you you need to keep learning for jms also like uh, yeah uh, similar to sap for jms uh, you can definitely we have uh, many trial things so i will try to give some demo for jms how it uh, works how connection works okay 
Mm. <clears throat> I have one question, uh, uh, Ravi. It's smart. Uh, on top of what the previous person asked, like uh, these GMS uh, uh, servers, they are uh, need to get license, right? So to be uh, uh, difficult, but I think uh, any point has uh, like VM connectors, right? Uh, like those do not require any software install and something. So uh, is that still gonna be part of this or just any type of event uh, driven things won't be here? See, here, uh, here, like uh, we have based API, we have scheduler based API, we have batch processing, but uh, like we don't have event driven things. Okay, so as I mentioned, like uh, for this particular business or use case, we don't need JMS, but for your learning purpose, uh, I will try to create some small demo with the help of JMS. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, Ravi, Ravi is a purpose of uh, um, uh, my interest in JMS is, you know, I know how to use it, but uh, I would like to, I would like you just, um, it is my, uh, uh, you know, when James, as his uh, previous speaker said, James, uh, Microsoft has its own uh, VM connector, but we also, there are also a situation where we can use third party James like active MQ. So um, just I would like you, which case uh, would be preferable, whether to use third party or the uh, out of box uh, from Microsoft. So say scenario sometimes for me, uh, just I would like a broader uh, knowledge uh, how to when and how to make use of James. That is uh, my interest. So here, like I, I just want to share a small uh, knowledge here. Like first thing, whenever you are selecting which JMS queue you are going to use, okay. So for to make your process asynchronous, we have many JMS service provider, okay. You know Java messaging service is a concept, and there are many company they provide this uh, queue, okay. We have uh, Apache Kafka, Apache. They provide, I think Tomcat. Tomcat provide JMS server. Then we have Anypoint MQ. Okay. Then we have IBM Q. Okay. And now I think uh, one one more product is very famous. Okay. For JMS uh, messaging, another product is also there. Okay. Right. Now yeah. how you will select which one is more suitable here? So first thing, what system you are going to integrate with? Okay, let's say you are going to integrate with IBM system. So most of the IBM system support IBM MQ only. So in that case, you need to integrate with IBM MQ. Or some existing uh, infrastructure is there where they are already using Anypoint MQ or they are already using Tomcat uh, JMS server. So in that case, you have to integrate with that Tomcat uh, JMS server. Okay, so you need to see like MuleSoft is compatible with all. MuleSoft is compatible with JMS provided by Tomcat, JMS uh, provided by means IBM MQ, Anypoint MQ, and other messaging service. Okay, MuleSoft is compatible with all. You need to see, you need to see which uh, like uh, target system going to consume message from there and how they are like, how they are compatible with that particular means they are compatible with which uh, particular messaging server. Okay, and if you want to do internal processing within your Mule application, then you can go with VMQ. Then you don't need to go with this external queue service provider. You need you can use VMQ to handle things internally. Is it clear now? Yes, Ravi. Thank you. Okay, fine. Okay, here you can see like a small uh, diagram where uh, how this CICD things works. Okay, so this is our center repository. Okay, you can, can say Git repository. Screen, please. Sorry. Can you make full screen? Okay, it's a full screen only. Was it full screen? Okay, all right, thank you. 
So here you can see this is Git Center repository. OK, so whenever we start our development, first what we do, we create a Center repository on Git server and then we clone it in our local repository. OK, this is our local repository. Now in this local repository, we will have multiple branches. Whenever we create Git repository, we should create multiple branch like a master branch, development branch, and if you are doing change, then you have to create your own feature branch. OK, so what you will do first, you will clone the repository in your local and you will select. You will create feature branch. OK, and then in you sorry, in any point studio, you will do development in your feature branch and then you will commit that code and you will commit in center repository. OK, once you will move your feature branch in your center repository, then you have to create here pull request. Okay. What pull request will do? So that pull request will merge your feature branch to means you have to create pull request from feature branch to master branch or feature branch to develop branch from where you have created your feature branch. So you need to create one pull request to that particular branch. Then you will do your code merge in that particular branch. Let's say you are merging in develop branch. OK, once you will develop there, then you will deploy on develop environment. OK, so in development like deployment also, we have multiple phase. First you will do, you will build your code. Then a unit will do unit testing. OK, during deployment also. You will write your command to do unit testing. Once it will pass, then with the help of sonar queue, you can do code review. So here you can create some rules. And if your code will not fulfill that rules, then your code deployment will fail. Then once uh, this will pass, then it will move your code in Nexus repo and it will deploy your code on Cloud Hub. Okay. Every company don't follow all these steps. Okay company to company steps will vary. OK, but this is the standard steps. For deployment. Okay. I'm, I'm doing recap of this. So first you will create a Git repository in your center repository like Git server. You will create a local repository and you will create one feature branch. You will do all the change in feature branch and you will commit and push that code into center repository. Then. You will create a pull request from feature branch to develop branch. You will merge your code in develop branch and then using CI CD pipeline, using Jenkins pipeline, what you will do, you will deploy your code. So steps will be first, it will build your code. OK, then it will do unit testing with the help of sonar queue. It will do code review and then it will move your code on Nexus repository and it will deploy your code. Finally, it will deploy your code on Cloud Hub. And once your code will start running, someone will start calling. It will create log. That log will move to Splunk or other logging framework. Okay. So generally, like this way, we perform CI/CD thing in our project. Okay. Now we will see like what all tool, technology and uh, accounts we are going to create for this particular project. So here the list of software, what you need to install. So here we will do setup in every one system. OK, all the setups will help you to do in your system. I will also do in my system at the same time. I will help you to do in your system also. OK, so what all software and tool we need for this particular project? First, we need any point platform account. So this account, like as a trial, you will get uh, any point platform account for one month. OK, after one month, you will not able to use your Cloud Hub. Oh, sorry, you, you will not able to use your Mule runtime. Other things will keep working, but your Mule runtime will not able uh, will not work. OK, so if you want to use. Like after that, how you will continue? So you using same email ID. You need to create account again. This time you need to provide new username. Only you need to keep changing username. Okay. So we will 
I will show you how to create this trial account. Then we will install any point studio software we will, where we will do development. OK, development we used to do here. We will create RAML, deployment, applying security policy, everything we will do on any point platform. OK. Then Git repository, we will use as a central repository where we will do our code checking and all. Git desktop, this particular tool we will use to manage this Git repository. OK, we can manage using command line also. We, we have multiple command to perform Git operation, but this Git desktop will give you user interface. Similar to Git desktop, we have another tool also like source tree and other. But Git desktop is very user friendly, so I prefer this one. So this will help you to manage your Git repository. OK, then Postman. We will use it to like do testing, so we will do setup of Postman. I will show you how we can install Maven and how we can do setup of Maven. Then we will see Salesforce account also, so uh, I will give you not very in-depth knowledge, but as a Mulesoft developer, what all you should know as a Salesforce admin, that knowledge I will share. OK, so here what all will we will do? We will create Salesforce account. I will show you how to generate security to uh, how to generate uh, which token secure token in Salesforce to connect with Salesforce, then how to create a custom object. OK, how to write query, how to like search for any record, those kind of admin work we will do here and I will explain to everyone. So you will also learn. Okay. Then. As a database, we are going to use Remote MySQL. So Remote MySQL, they provide us one uh, cloud platform where we can create our MySQL database. OK, and that uh, cloud SQL database we will use for our integration. OK, again, we will see uh, JDK installation and JDK setup, what we need for our MuleSoft or Anypoint Studio. OK, coming to Maven and JDK. These are inbuilt in our studio, but still if you want to have more compatibility, OK, then we, we can install our own Maven and our own JDK. OK, so those step I will see. I, I will show you how you can install the, these two software and how you will integrate with any point studio. Then Confluence, as we discussed, like uh, we will see Confluence, we will see Jira. Okay, Jira, is, yeah. Jira account we will see, we will see Confluence. Those things we will see and for SMS and email we will see for SMS we will uh, use third party API and for email we will use SMTP server. OK, so for this two also we have to do some setting for SMS uh, like third party API. We need to do registration. We, we need to create account there and for email. We need to use SMTP server and at the same time on your uh, like if you are using Gmail, then on your Gmail server, you need to do some setup. OK, that I will show you how to do. Then only you will able to send email using a SMTP server. OK, many people were asking like what all connector and what all uh, target system we will have and what all like. Uh, target system will be involved in our integration, so we will have Salesforce database, SMTP object store, HTTP connector, API kit connector, Secure property connector, Spring module. Okay, this is not finalized yet. I am trying to introduce Spring module also. So, with the help of this Spring module, we can do basic authentication on flow level. Okay, so far you have seen like how to do basic authentication on gateway level, but with the help of Spring module, you can do basic authentication on flow level also. So, that we will see with the help of this one. For this, like it's not 100% confirmed, I will cover, but I have planned for this. Then OAuth connector we will use to generate OAuth token and to validate OAuth token. Okay. Component wise, like we will use lots of component almost like in MuleSoft, we have 30 plus component. So like 75% component we will use in this particular project. But I have highlighted what all major component or uh, important component we will use. So we will use batch processing, caching, choice router, scatter gather, and for loop. This five 
like uh, important component we are going to use. A part of that, we are going to use 20 more component, but these all are important components. OK, so here I have shared all the URL. So this document I will share with you. So here I have shared all the URLs and things, how this works. OK, that we will see slowly one by one. OK, so before this, I will take some few more things and then we will go with this installation part and all. OK. OK, one thing is missing here, security policy. So let me take that security policy also what we are going to use here. So first we will use OAuth. Then we will use client ID enforcement. Then rate limiting. HTTP casting. So these all security policy we will see while explaining this project. Basic authentication. Spike control. Few policy we will integrate, few policy I will explain. Okay. A few more policies are there uh, for now. Let it be. OK. So this part is fine. I will share all these documents. Okay. OK, now before going to like software installation and all few things we will understand in MuleSoft how this API led architecture works. OK, and at the same time, like how and what process we are going to follow for API development. OK. So. I think uh, already one diagram. Let me take that. So here you can see we have three layer. OK, this is the first layer. This is the second layer and this is the third layer. So in API led architecture, we have three layer architecture. One is experience layer, another one is process layer and next is system layer. So this system layer in like connect with external system like Salesforce, database, JMS. OK, so this system layer will connect with external system. OK, and in this process layer, we apply all the business logic and it works as an intermediate between experience layer and system layer. OK, this process layer, we apply all the business logic. OK, let's say here, this process layer is connecting with all these three system layer and it do perform some business logic here. OK, and once it will connect with all the system layer, it will perform all the business logic. It will send response back to this experience layer. So you can see this is intermediate between these two layers, system layer and experience layer. And in experience layer, we used to expose our API to external world. Let's say front end want to call this API or some other system want to call this API. So how they will interact with us, how they will interact with MuleSoft. So they will connect with experience layer, they will make call to experience layer. So here it, we will validate all the security policy like they are authorized user or not. Once everything will be completed, then we will pass that request to process layer. In process layer, it will apply all the business logic. It will call all the required system layer to get the data. And then once everything will be done, it will respond back to experience layer and experience layer will respond back to calling system. OK, now you will say like how and like why we are splitting this API single API into three API. Why not 
we can do in monolithic architecture, everything in one API. Okay, everything in one layer. The main advantage of this here, like you can reuse API. Okay, here I have like, uh, I will update this diagram, but you can see a retrieve policy detail. This process API also calling retrieve policy detail. Okay, let's say this one, record policy detail. This process layer also using this record policy detail, and this process layer also using this same API. Okay, these two are not separate API, these two are same API only. Okay, so you can see here with the help of this API layer architecture, what we are doing, we are splitting our functionality small into small, small sub module or small, small module. And then we are trying to make things more reusable. Okay, it's similar to microservice architecture where we are splitting that big piece of code into a small, small piece of code, and we are trying to utilize those, those code in multiple places. Okay, so same way in API led architecture, we break our functionality in small, small piece in such a way so we can re reuse that particular piece of code. So that is the main advantage, like we can reuse the piece of code. And at the same time, if there will be any problem in any part of code, then it will impact only limited functionality. Your entire functionality will not be impacted. In monolithic architecture, what will happen? If it will be fail at any one place, then your entire application will stop working. But in microservice architecture or in API led architecture, if this API will stop working, only this will impact this process API. This, this API will keep working. This all API will keep working. Okay, so even if there will be any failure, only limited API or limited functionality will be impacted. Okay, and at the same time, your development process will be very fast. Okay, let's say you have new requirement which is going to use this two API. Okay. So you don't need to write this code again. You will just make a call. So your development effort will be saved here. So your development process will be very fast. Likewise, we have multiple advantage with this API led architecture, which is very similar to microservice architecture. Okay, hope everyone clear with this. And another important thing, API development lifecycle. So we are going to follow this API development lifecycle suggested by MuleSoft. Okay, we are going to follow this complete lifecycle. Okay, so we will start from design. Okay, so first we will create our demo in Design Center. Then we will simulate. So what we will do once we will complete the demo, then we will publish on Exchange. And we'll ask BA people to give feedback. Not only BA, like whoever, from where we got requirement, we'll ask them to go through demo and we'll give uh, to give us feedback. Now you will say like uh, why why we are looking for feedback at the very beginning. Okay, if if we will complete development and testing and everything, and then we will get okay, we did something wrong. We have to do lots of rework. Okay, so at the very beginning when we create RAML. And RAML, what it do? It tells behavior of our API. Okay, so it will tell you like what will be input of input of that particular API, what will be output of that API. Okay, what 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 will be resource name? So all those kind of behavior behavior of API will be explained by RAML. Okay, so at the very beginning, when RAML will be created, from where we got requirement, we'll ask to give them feedback. Okay, if feedback is positive, then we will go for development. We will go for next cycle development. If feedback is negative, then we will again update our demo. We will publish on Exchange. We will ask BA to again validate. Okay, so we will follow this cycle until unless we will not get positive feedback. And once positive feedback we will get, we will start the development. So in any point studio, we will create our demo. We will start the implementation of our demo. Till this point, 
we are just doing we are creating skeleton okay we are just documenting our api okay and from here actual implementation will start and then we will do testing in testing phase we will have many testing like we will do unit testing we will do m unit testing those those two are unit testing only which will be done by developer then testing team will do integration testing uat team like user will do uat testing qa team will do performance and load testing once all the testing will be done then we will apply security policy then we will register our api on api manager we will apply security policy and then we will deploy our application on cloud hub and once the deployment will be done then we have to do monitoring we have to do troubleshoot and we have to manage our api so those things will come in picture so we will follow all these steps okay so maybe like at this moment we are just going through high level okay then for each part, whatever component and part you can see here, for each part we will take one day. Okay, for creating RAML only, it will take two two session. Okay, I'm just right now I'm just giving you high level overview. For everything, it will take lots of session and lots of classes. For RAML, for this part we will take two class. For this part we will take almost like six class. For this part we will take one class. For this part we will take one to two class. For this part we will take half day. Half day of session. Okay. So this is just high level overview to understand what we are going to do in coming days. Okay. Yeah. Hitsum, you have something so you can ask. Yes. Uh, uh, if I wasn't mistaken, I ha heard you say, uh, Ravi, that uh, as the new software developer, we will, we're going to be doing immunity tests and unit tests. Yes. So is there any difference between those two? Yeah, unit testing means you are doing going to do manually. Using Postman, you are calling your API, you are checking your API behaving as per expectation or not. Okay. Oh, and yeah. MUnit will automate your testing process. Once you will write MUnit script, you don't need to do manual testing. You like whenever you will do change, whenever you will run MUnit script, it will automatically test your API and it will tell you like uh, is there any failure in your API or not. Okay, whenever we hit it with Postman, uh, is that still a unit test? Because I thought uh, whenever you hit it from Postman, different systems will communicate. Does that still qualify Postman. as a unit test? Yeah, whenever we are calling from Postman, we are doing unit testing. We are testing our, let's say, here we have many API. Okay, you are calling, you are testing this particular API. Okay. So you are doing you, you are testing particular this API and you are checking behavior of this API. So this is unit testing. Integration testing means once everything will be integrated, this API will be ready, this will be ready, this will be ready. Then testing team will call this from here and they will see all the behavior of all the API and they will see target system behavior also. Everything as per expectation or not. So that is integration testing. Okay. Any any other doubt from anyone else? Okay, fine. So till this point, I think uh, we are good. Okay, and then. is all our table detail that we will discuss later on. This also we will discuss later on. Okay, uh, I created some content, but I think by mistakenly I deleted it. Let me let me quickly check in my recycle then.
yeah. time wise like uh, i have seen my in my previous batches like people are getting confused about time and like in between of uh, classes they used to ask so to make it clear okay so we will have this uh, like complete training program uh, around 6 week okay this is standard time based on my previous experience in worst case it will go for 8 week okay but uh, 98% possibility will be there it will be completed in 6 week okay i don't want to just complete this course if some people are taking time so i will give them time and even if it will be extended for 1 2 week i am okay with that okay timing wise iest time okay it will be 7 to 10 Okay, Saturday and Sunday, and we will have one doubt session on Wednesday, seven to nine. Okay. Eastern time it will be nine thirty to twelve thirty. In between, okay, I missed one thing. In between, we will have fifteen minute break also. When we will have our class, so in in between this three hour, we will have fifteen minute break. Okay, so. we will have both the day 15 15 minute break and then doubt session we will not have any break and time will be wednesday 7 to 9 ist 7 pm to 9 pm and wednesday eastern time it will be 9:30 to 12:30 it will be again pm okay for you it may be yeah same day 9:30 to Eleven thirty. I will share this in group also. Okay, and then as I mentioned, like a uh, few people, you are beginner. Okay, so here we are going to cover things from very scratch. But still, what I will suggest you, you should go with all this content. Okay, uh, first one, this training one, I have created some video from very scratch. Okay, let me open this one. if you will able to complete then uh, like coming few day first of all you will get some tuning with me okay since uh, you will able to understand how i am explaining things so that kind of understanding you will get at the same time many things we are going to use in our project like error handling object store those kind of knowledge i have shared here in very detail okay so if you will able to cover this video then definitely it will give you some added advantage so this one is for basic concept and i will add one more playlist that is for data view if you will able to complete this also then it will be again it will be good for you only and this will help you in your interview also so here i have explained lots of concept related to data view and then third uh, i think uh, most of you like uh, reach to me using this project only if you have completed then well and good if not then please complete this project also this is very small project but this will give you very uh, like good understanding of mule soft okay if anyone hasn't completed then this try to so till 16 video you need to complete remaining four video you can leave so till 16 video you need to complete then you will get very good understanding how this api led architecture works and you will get many other understanding also okay and whatever feedback i have got so far almost like 2 uh, 300 people like personally they have ping me and they told like uh, they like this content very much since uh, this project is from very scratch and in this project there is no much complex logic are there so you will able to understand things very clearly you don't need any any kind of like guidance you can go through video and you can understand by yourself and after this training at the end of this training you need to start working on this so here you will get almost 200 or 300 recently asked interview question and some scenario based question so this you can start parallelly also if you have some understanding you can start parallelly if you don't have then i will suggest complete this project first and then go with this okay so this learning you need to start and timing also i am listing in our whatsapp group 
so first three you need to means i will suggest to complete by coming saturday okay if you will able to complete by coming saturday then it will be very good for you okay okay and then i think uh, we are good with today uh, hi ravi yes yeah uh, you have posted in the our group it was the dust session will be held by thursday but today just you said okay. by wednesday i don't okay. know uh, i'm okay with thursday or wednesday and they should be fine i i'm trying to put in in between of week okay yeah it was it was in the thursday so but you change it today to wednesday that's why to make okay, it clear. no problem so that we will discuss okay even if you need two day thursday and wednesday both the day i'm okay with that Okay. Okay. So, and for first week we don't need. I I think for first two week we don't need doubt session, but from uh, third week you need this doubt session. Okay, and then we will discuss based on everyone availability either Wednesday or Thursday or both the day we will add a doubt session. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I think most of you have this WhatsApp number. So if you will have any doubt, better I will suggest to use our private group. what i have created but uh, if you want to ping me personally if something is there you want to discuss then you can use this number only whatsapp message and call will be possible no phone call yeah navita you have some question yeah you can ask in the beginning you told, you told us any point account is a free trial account for the 30 hour, 30 days means for one month sir ah sorry any sorry. point any point platform account okay yeah that It will be valid for, for one month, month. No? yeah Yeah, you told us. Yeah, yeah. So, how can we migrate the artifacts what we have created in the old yes. account, sir? Yes, yes. That will take one hour effort. Okay. So yeah. even I have to migrate. Like uh, once we will start working, after a few day, I will migrate. So you need to follow same steps. So again, we need to push that code uh, into Git repository again, sir. After migrating all those, or do we need to change in that uh, uh, new trial account only? Okay, so first of all, like Git will be independent of that migration. Okay, okay. what we will do, we will uh, move everything from our existing account to new account. After one month, once my trial period will be completed. Okay, so for that, I have some steps like uh, uh, in, in previous classes also. So it will take thirty minute to one hour. So what we will do, we will export everything from there and we will import in new account. It will not take much time. Okay. and how to do that i will explain when i will do in my system that i that okay. i will share yeah okay thank you sir okay any any other query okay uh, so like as per plan like today i am not going to start technical part okay so today like uh, my mon uh, focus on this like what we are going to do in this particular project what all things we will cover okay so i just want to introduce with all those things so in this coming one week you will prepare yourself you will go through basic of all this and as i told i am going to share all this uh playlist so you need to complete all this video by this week okay means uh number of video will be like many uh, you have to spend 2 to 3 hour daily then only you will able to complete at least what i will suggest now even if you want you can do data b part later first you need to complete this two okay if you will able to complete this two by coming saturday like here you have 16 video here also 16 video each video will be around 1 hour so total 30 video will be there 15 15 30 video so almost like uh, okay 3 to 4 hour you need to spend it will be good if you will complete in one week then next week you can start working on this but even if you will not able to complete you can do in next week also that should be fine but try to complete by this week why i am saying like this after doing this then next part like when i will start real time project you will get in depth understanding otherwise if you will learn that particular component during this real time project then you are learning mulesoft concept you you will be focus on new learning of new soft concept you will not able to understand in real time project way okay 
So concept, if you will clear before coming to real time project, then it will be good for you. Hope everyone clear with this. No one has queried. Yes, Ted, you are saying something. Uh, yes, uh, my uh, query is like once we complete this project, is that possible? Can we uh, like put like can we you know put it in our GitHub account and uh, for possible employers? Can we show it like as a showcase? Yes, this yes, project? I will. Yes, yes, I will share that. Uh, everything i will share source code document everything whatever you have seen so far mm -hmm. this you will get at the same time we will create i will give you a demo also okay let me show you another project what this is the current project so here you can see all the source code are here okay okay all the documents are here what i used in this pro project like functional design document and flow and other di diagram Okay, everything you will get. Okay, even the demo should be somewhere. This is the fragment, and somewhere should be demo also. Okay, everything you will get in Git. Once uh, I will keep committing everything in Git, and you can clone in your local, and you can download everything. And yeah, I will uh, like uh, it will be good if you will do all the setup in your system, and if you will do hands-on experience, then only you will get uh, good understanding, and you will able to learn this project. OK, Fitzum, I think you have ready. You can ask. Yes, uh, uh, Ravi, uh, my any point studio uh, has become very slow. For some reason, I'm not sure why uh, it's been like that for like uh, three weeks. So I was not doing any type of uh, development work like uh, in terms of writing code. So what okay. uh, this is also a very good point. So yeah. for any point studio, like it's a recommended to use. I think 16 GB RAM. And uh, I5, but even if you have 8 GB RAM with I5, it will work very perfectly. Even my system, current system. OK, I forgot it's a 16 or 8. It's a 8 GB only 8 GB RAM and I5 and it's working very fine. So it's telling me there is a binary issue. It's telling me that. OK. See, binary source can be due to many reasons, like uh, your Java is installed properly or not. Or that that I will see separately. OK, that you can okay. connect me after class. OK, that I okay. will see separately. And anyhow, we are going to do all the setup. OK, so we will do all the system set, all the software setup in everyone's system. So you will get idea how to do. If you will miss, uh, if you have missed any, any particular setting, then you will follow me and you will do it. OK. OK, fine. Any any other query? OK, fine, then uh, we are good with today. Today I am not starting technical part. OK, I am just uh, trying to give you some time to complete this too. OK, so you will have better understanding of real time project. OK, so you, everyone start working. And if you will have any doubt, you can put in our group, uh, that private group, what we have created. So I will try to answer everything. Like what, whatever query you will have, I will try to answer there. OK, fine then. Uh, so we'll start our development from coming Saturday. So thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time.